everyone. Thanks for joining us for another How I Shot It. This week, I get to chat with Tanya Prada. Tanya, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. I, I've been amazed by your work in the Magmod community, and I'm so excited to show the photos that you picked out here with everybody. Thank you. Very kind. I'm excited, too. Yeah. So let's tell everyone real quick where they can find you online. So it's Parada Studio for my website and also for social media. So super simple. Fantastic. And I just want to mention real quick, uh, you got the El Salvador mug. I, for yeah. those, those Latinos in the, in the crowd, uh, she's representing there. So <laughs> yeah, my husband's awesome. Salvadorian. And so, uh, just kind of my mother-in-law got this mug for me and you got a rep, you got a rep. I see you. bien. So <laughs> Tanya, let's jump into this first photograph that you have. Um, it, it it's out of this world. How punny was that? Ah, I love it. Yes, out of this world is correct. So tell, tell us about this shot. I'm super interested, like, where it was taken and kind of how you set up the light and what was kind of going through your mind as you were creating it. Sure, let's talk about it. So um, this photo was taken at Griffith Observatory, which a lot of photographers actually have shot there. Um, it can sometimes be a bit of a challenging location because there's a lot of tourists, especially since, like, La La Land happened. It's just kind of blown <laughs> up. Um, but this was a location that our client, who's actually um, MagMod photographer as well, Scott uh, Jossie White, and nice. so he was uh, coming out to propose to his beautiful girl and asked us to photograph his uh, proposal and his engagement at Griffith Observatory at sunset, which is like peak time. For yeah, totally. Everybody. I've been there at that time, and it's packed with people. Yeah, so I was like, all right, how can we create something very interesting and unique for this awesome couple who are also photographers? So, yeah, not intimidating at all, but <laughs> um, no, it was great. And so this is taken inside of the observatory, and it's um, kind of down below in this showcase room. And immediately what I thought was, you know, I can kind of, kill all the rest of these distractions and just focus on the planets. Um, but the, the issue with this location is, as a lot of places in LA, they don't allow um, you to have like light stands mm -hmm. and stuff. And so um, I had my assistant, who was my husband that day, to come along with me and help me uh, kind of just be my voice activated light stand. So he stood behind that um, planet, which don't ask me what, Saturn? Saturn, yeah. <laughs> Please don't. I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not good with that. Anyway, I, neither am I. But I remember doing a project on that planet, like in third grade. So, okay. so <laughs> stood behind that planet, and um, we just used a quarter CTO gel, which is um, my my usual, a grid, and then also a sphere. Um, so that's pretty much my usual magma lighting setup throughout a lot of my images hmm. and I really like that combo so yeah so so let me ask you this then was the planet was it closer to you then so I was up on a balcony okay um oh. and I used like a I think it was a 24 to 70 lens so you oh. know wide enough um uh -huh. but uh, the perspective is definitely like looking down towards it Gotcha. And those planets are being pin light with light that's probably in the room something, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, was there people walking around at that time? Yeah, totally. So there's yeah. all these different um, like TV screens and interactive stuff all around there. And so by using the Magma uh, setup, I was able to kind of just kill everything down and yeah. use that um, the focus on those, those lights that were uh, showing the planets. I, I love that, Tanya, because I think one of the things when people get into using flash, one of the things they think about is like, okay, where do I light stuff up? How do I light this? How do I light that? And I, and I think one of the most important things that I could share with somebody who's beginning in, in flash photography is think not just in terms of lighting stuff up, but of killing the light. And, and by what I mean by that is darkening everything down in your screen and using only your flash to bring back what you want to see. So, you know, you had all this stuff in that room, you had people, everything else, and you're able to kill all of it and only put light and spotlight those things that you really wanted to see using the mag grid and the mag sphere together, which is like the most popular combo out there. So, yeah. um, that's awesome. And 
I, someone had taught me too, which I really liked this tip um, when I was first starting out was kind of like squinting your eyes a little bit whenever you're in a scenario to kind of kill the lights down and then you can just visualize where the hot spots are and see if those are things you want to incorporate and then pop the flash in. So that was a really good tip for me and that's kind of something I do when I walk into a scene, just kind of shut my eyes down and see what uh, what's going on. I love that. So let's jump on to the second photo, which is another fantastic photo. Um, this is one I think a lot of people have a hard time actually capturing because sometimes it's hard to get that light exactly where you want it. And I'm talking about this photo of the, the couple, the silhouette, where there's a little bit of light on her eyes. Um, can you tell us how you set this one up? So same setup is a sphere and a grid right behind them. Um, and I, the, the way that you can kind of capture this a little bit easier is if um, <clears throat> one of the couple or one of the people is kind of wearing something a little bit lighter hmm. but she was that gray kind of shirt below and <clears throat> sorry sorry um, i don't know why i just got a frog in my throat Burp. um so then angling their faces kind of like this will create a bounce off of the cheek yeah and so that's how we're able to kind of reflect light back off of her cheek is that they were a little bit separated from each other angled away yeah um, so that it's a, it's a really simple setup but super um, easy to, to, to do. Where, Tanya, on this shot here, where was the placement of your flash? Was it kind of behind and to the right? Yeah, behind to, to the right to kind of illuminate more of her hair. Mm -hmm. um, and then to hide the flash as well. And then just kind of angled up just a little bit um, yeah. to kind of fill in some of their you know, yeah. and chin and stuff. Yeah. Uh, super windy day. Like it was it was great for the photo, but like super windy. I was like, please, I do not want to lose my flash. Like <laughs> <laughs> we were working right on the side of a cliff, so that was kinda kinda funny. So you're saying it wouldn't have been a good situation to use an umbrella? <laughs> no. We actually brought the mag box on this shoot and there's no way that like we used it like once. Yeah. No way we could have used it for this type of image just because it would have yeah, in a way, but you know it's funny because the too bad against it. Just it was a really windy day. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. You know what? It's funny because the Magbox is um, certainly more wind resistant than an umbrella, but right. an umbrella is like, gosh, you have like a light breeze and it will blow your flash away. Um, but no, I I think in this situation, I think even for this photograph here, um, you really, I mean, what you're, it's kind of, it's you're more looking for that kind of hard light, anyways, because it's going to be bouncing off his subject or his cheek. Um, I think one thing that's interesting about this photograph is when you first look at it, especially somebody who has never done anything like this before, they would think that your light would have been back into the left and lighting her up maybe over his shoulder or something. But just to reiterate what you were saying is his face is just a little bit forward, kind of tilted forward just a tiny bit so that it's bouncing off his face and actually lighting her up. So had you shot this from the other side, his face would be super bright. Yeah, I mean the girl's always the queen. Like yeah, <laughs> I was put the the more directional light towards um, the female. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I hundred percent agree with you. Girl is always the queen. Um, so Tanya, let's jump onto this next shot. You got all these incredible uh, kind of this. I almost want to title this like outer worldly photographs, like amazing images. And this next one, you have this incredible couple with the galaxy. I know this is something that a lot of people would love to be able to capture and, and maybe struggle with. So tell them how they can do something like this. Yeah. So I think a lot of people have actually tried this shot out and it can be a little bit more challenging to do in terms of like time commitment, but once you get the idea behind it, it's super, super easy to do. Um, so I had our camera on a tripod. I set the exposure for, uh, I think it was 25 seconds or 20 seconds. Um, and I had two flashes in, in, in this scene. One was camera left, um, okay. held by my husband that front lit them again with a sphere. Um, and then the back one was a port or half CTO with the grid and no sphere. So, okay. and I had two, two assistants and then just popped them at certain times of the, of the exposure, um, just to most, most flashes now just do it, but, um, a couple flashes you'll have to kind of pop it. Yeah. So I would count down and then just say, okay, pop. And then both of them would pop it and, um, 
able to, to get this, this so, shot. So basically you'd have your, let's say your 25 second exposure or whatever exposure was, you'd hit the button and then you would tell the person, okay, three, two, pop, like yep. right towards the end. Is that right? Yep. Love it. So then just to reiterate, you had one flash to the left, you had one flash behind them and the flash behind them had a CTO gel and the one in left, it was your assistant was holding and, and that's the one creating that shadow. Is that correct? Right. That's correct. Yeah. And, and which mag, did you say this was mag grid, mag sphere again? Yeah. So the flash behind is mag grid and CTO um, at half CTO. And then the flash in front doesn't have a grid. It just has a, like a quarter CTO mm -hmm. um, because with long exposures, uh, you kind of want to use the uh, least amount of um, modifiers to blocking it but i love yeah. using the colors in order to kind of warm things up because at night like it was a really really cold night and, you know yeah night and so just adding a little bit of color helps especially in post process yeah absolutely tanya do you find that you typically when you're shooting these uh do you have your couples hold pretty still i mean granted it's not picking them up except for the flash but have you noticed yeah. any ghosting or anything if they do move at all uh, yeah um i do to ask them to keep pretty still um oh. For the most part, the flash kind of freezes them, especially yeah. if I'm not at, you know, especially if the flash is a little bit closer to them. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful image. I absolutely love it. Um, it's it something, is. like I said, I it's funny because I've never really had the opportunity to, I shouldn't say opportunity. We probably all have opportunities to try it, but I've never actually gone out and done this with a couple um, in over 350 plus weddings that I've shot. And it's something that I've always said, you know, I need to go out and just do it one of these days. I guess one last question before, before we move on to the next photo. Mm -hmm. Um, do you find that when you do this type of image, do you normally have to find an area that's pretty dark, like away from any light pollution? Yes, it has to be zero light pollution. Like we even had a car, this was in Death Valley, we had a car go by and I had to kind of clone that guy out. Um, yeah. Even with just a car that's way in the distance, it, it can create some light pollution. So yeah. it has to be super clean. And um, this image took about 30 minutes. So you kind of have to prep your client to be patient um, to really be able to do this shot, but, um, it's worth it. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a fun one to show them, you know, after you're all done to kind of show it to them and they're like, what? Like, that's incredible. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's true. certainly a piece of artwork. That's for sure. Well, awesome. Well, Tanya, let's go into this next photograph, which happens if anyone has watched how I shot it, they know that this is one of my favorite types of composition, which is using subframing. Uh, you did it so perfectly here though. And, and I love the light that you put on your couple to really make them pop. So tell us about this photograph. Yeah, so this is also at a venue that's very photographed a lot. Um, and it's actually the backside of what a lot of uh, photographers will use. It's kind of this cement circular, I don't know what you want to call it, um, mm -hmm. but the front side is, is kind of decorated, uh, but the back side just kind of has a really cool, just circular uh, yeah. shape. And so um, I shot this, uh, I had like three minutes. I was second shooting this wedding and mm -hmm. helping somebody out with this wedding. And so I just said, hey, I got an idea. It'll be super, super quick. Set up my flash, ran back, composed, and then instructed the couple and took it. So um, it was just one flash off on camera right, right behind the pillar. And um, yeah, I think it was a... Uh, Grid, and again, quarter CTO. Yeah. So, do you, do you find <laughs> do you find yourself using that quarter CTO a lot? I do. I do. I feel like it's it just kind of warms up skin tones yeah. for what wedding and romantic type of photos. It just kind of gives it a little bit of, of warmth. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's definitely one of my favorites. I agree. It, it is one of those go-tos that you can almost, I, I almost just wish they would just build it into the flashes already and just yeah. make the light temperature a little bit, uh, a little bit more warm. It doesn't yeah. make a huge difference. It's about 500 degrees Kelvin or something, but it's just enough to just warm up those skin tones. So I absolutely love it. Well, this is a beautiful image. So you had your flash hidden to the right. Uh, you said mag, uh, mag grid and a CTO or mag sphere and a CTO. I'm sorry. It might've been a mag, mag sphere as well, but I, uh, definitely a grid and definitely a quarter CTO. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, so pretty. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So let's, uh, this last image here. Um, I think I've been to this location actually. 
up there in Malibu. It's absolutely beautiful. I love this light on their hair. Is that ambient light or is that a flash as well? No, so that's a flash. That's what that's what I really, really like about this image is um, that it looks, especially the direction of where the sun's going down, it looks yeah. like natural light. It looks like it's a sunset, but it's totally flash. So um, that's kind of why I wanted to talk about this one just because it's, you know, I think like using... I've kind of come from learning that you don't necessarily need to use flash just to show that you can use flash, yeah. but to use flash with intention. And um, I'm trying that a lot more this year is like putting it where natural light would be and yeah. kind of incorporating it naturally. Um, so this flash was just right behind them. Spear, a uh, half CTO and a grid. Or not a grid, sorry. No grid. Just so. Half so, and it was just one flash in this, is that right? Yeah, just one flash. So, in other words, in front of them, basically, you exposed kind of natural ambient exposure. Yeah. But what? Well, it's funny because I, I didn't even we hadn't talked about this image prior. But what we both enjoy about this shot is that gold lighting. And and just to make sure I understand correctly, where that little touch of red is on the mountain line, is that where that sun had set? Yeah, that's where it's setting. Awesome. And so you have that sun behind them and then you just put that flash with the mag sphere and a CTO in order to create that golden light as if it was actually coming from the sun. Yeah. That's awesome. Tanya, what a great shot. And I love, I just, I mean, it really makes that pop. I, I, I think the image would be good without the, the flash, but man, it's a phenomenal shot with that flash. It really just adds so much value to it. Love it. Absolutely love right. it. I had done that photo both ways, actually. So I'd taken it without the flash and then uh -huh. taken it with the flash. Um, but I, I love backlit stuff and like hair just kind of flying all over the place. I think it's really cool. And so that flash just kind of illuminated their hair. And I was like, you know, that's better than natural light for sure. But, that's um, awesome. But yeah. No, it's absolutely beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Tanya, for sharing these images with us. The, the, you got some incredible work. And uh, it's funny, you had mentioned Scott in the beginning. He actually talked about you a couple weeks ago on the How I Shot It, uh, about you you know, having the opportunity to be photographed by you. He's an amazing photographer. And like I mentioned, he was on the How I Shot It. So if you guys, if you're watching this and you haven't seen Scott's episode, go check his out as well. Go check it out, because he's amazing. He <laughs> yeah. is really killing it. It's awesome. He is, he is. But Tanya, you have, like, in, in such a short time, I want to say in just a couple years, have just taken the industry by storm. You've done some incredible work. Uh, and, and I just super appreciate you taking the time to share some of these photographs with us. And I especially, I think there's some really good tips here. I love that one that you mentioned right at the end of just being conscious of where the sun is setting or where the light source normally is and not, you know, trying to change it, but to just enhance it, you know, like you did here yeah. with the sun. So what well, a great Well, someone tip. taught me that. And so, you know, <laughs> if anyone else can use that and feel like that helps. Yeah, absolutely. Only. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, Tanya, let's tell everyone really quickly one more time where I'll say or where they can find you again. Okay. So, it's uh, paradastudio.com for a website and then social media at Parada Studio. Awesome. Hey, Tanya, you absolutely rock. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And it's so good to see you. Yeah. No. Well, we, hey, it's good to see you. And we're, we're happy to have you here on uh, the Magmod uh, How I Shot It. And by the way, for those who are watching this for the first time, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And then, of course, we do these every single week. So be sure to join us every Friday and, and check out the new episodes and you'll find amazing photographers like Tanya and be able to be inspired by them. So thanks again. Thanks, Tanya. Thank you. <laughs>